Welcome to Comic Confidential, our pop culture podcast. I'm your host, Kate, and alongside me today is Troy. Yo, new intro. New intro. What's happening? Oh, I threw you off a little bit. Yeah, you threw me for a curveball. Curveball. Yep. Got you out, buddy. Yep, sure did. <laughs> we really need to work on our sporting references. We should just probably drop them all together. No, I, I feel like we're getting better. No. Yeah. <laughs> we're definitely not. Each week, new sporting reference. Okay, sure. Sure. We'll, 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 do, we'll do one a week. We're allowed one sporting reference a week. Okay. Uh, and hopefully, by the time the show wraps up, whenever that is, uh, episode 500, I think we called. 500? Yeah. We're gonna wrap wow. Up. Yeah. We're going to wrap this up on episode 500. And uh, yeah, hopefully by the end, we'll, uh, we'll know sports. Wow. So, so but currently, this is episode 129. Yes. And uh, this week, we are reviewing Jurassic World Fallen. Fallen? Fall. Autumn Kingdom. <laughs> autumn Kingdom. That's what I'm going with. What? <laughs> because autumn, it's, you know, just like a meh month. So. How, how do you butcher Fallen Kingdom? It's pretty difficult for me, Troy. Yeah. Uh, just speaking in general, I don't know why I ever decided to start a talking platform. <laughs> Look, I, <laughs> I have my own name for it, but we will uh, we'll get to that uh, when we get to it. we we got some other things yeah, to talk okay. about before we get there. But yeah, we did. We watched that this week um, and uh, that happened. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's. Uh, what well, I guess my question to you, Cade, is what are you looking at? You know what I'm looking at? What? Nothing, Troy, because I tried to watch the DC Universe trailer that was supposed to come out today, and it got released everywhere but Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone, like, honestly, I genuinely believe there is somebody out there somewhere that controls the internet and is just like, you know what? Fuck Australia. You know who it is. Oh. It's the flat earthers. They don't think Australia <laughs> exists. Well, they need to get their shit together because I want to see this stuff. So do I. This was a massive announcement. Um, God, look. Mate, we- our, our listener community was lit, as the kids would say, with excitement for this. Yeah. And I was like, hey, guys, just keep an eye out. A couple of hours. This is going to drop. Yep, yep. Nothing. Nothing. I look like the biggest goose. <laughs> Now, we did obviously get some stuff. We just can't see the actual whole trailer and all that sort of stuff, which is fine. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. If you if you did a search for it, you'd be able to find it by now. But um, basically, yeah, so they're dropping this uh, streaming service, which we knew was coming. Um, but some of the details that have dropped with it are legit insane. Like, I am dead set excited for this, um, except for the fact that I shouldn't be because it, you looks, can't get like, yeah, it. it looks like we're not going to get it. So um, that's only going to help Australia's pirating issue oh, once like, again. Hello. Captain Jack Sparrow over here. Oh, mate, I'm getting the Black Pearl out. Yeah. Let's go. The Black Pearl. Yeah. Sounds like a sex toy. Well, that, and it's also my pirate ship. Ah, oh, nice. It's cool. It's, 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 you know, it has a double purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, your pirate ship is a sex toy. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Jesus. Um, anyway, so obviously, uh, I guess the biggest thing to come out of this, well, there's a couple of obviously really big things, but one of the biggest things is we got a new look at Robin. Yeah, we did. Uh, which a couple of really impressive looks, actually. Uh, and I will tell you this much, that it's only uh, reaffirmed my status as being hyped as fuck for Titans. Hell yeah. This looks amazing, man. This Robin looks badass. Now, in these pictures uh, that we see, which, you know, jump on the internet. I can't help you with this. This is an audio-only format. Uh, but the pictures that you see, like, it, it, it's not like the suit isn't as form-fitting as you, like, might think. Yeah. Um, based on, say, earlier things that we've seen. Yeah, that first picture that came out, that suit looked like it was very tight, very... Yeah. Um, Form fitting, yeah, is yeah. like like you said, For but sure. this new one is like it's a loosey goosey. It's very functional looking, but not loose and looking shit. Yeah, it's still very functional. Uh, it looks like basically the 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 breastplate and all that sort of section acts as like some sort of you know like a Kevlar vest or yes. something like that, and then the rest is kind of like open. Open for stabbies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what it reminds me of? It's like kind of combat suits. Yeah, but just maybe a little bit more fitting. Yeah, he's totally wearing a jujitsu gi. Yeah, yes. Yeah, definitely. 100%. <laughs> but no, it he's does, ready to throw down. He is. Oh, that's another sport reference there, Troy. Uh, throw down? Isn't that just fighting? I think so. That's not a sport reference. Um, so anyway, yeah. So we get that, and that looks cool, and it looks great. And then we also get a little bit more information about, you know, Titans is a show that's coming. Uh, they were also talking about, you know, Harley Quinn, obviously. We've spoken about all these before, but there's like Young Justice, Outsiders, Doom Patrol, Swamp Thing, that's coming. But the other thing that's really exciting about this is they're going to give you access to like basically every DC TV show 
that's been created. That's awesome. Which is cool. Then they're also going to give us um, access to uh, all DC movies, which is cool as well. Hell yeah. And on top of that, we also get unlimited streaming of comics. I can't wait for that. So, so this is really DC's version of Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but with you know everything else that Marvel Unlimited doesn't give you, like TV and stuff. That's pretty cool. So is that going to also give access to, say, um, Arrow, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, things like that? Yeah, as far as I'm aware. Holy! Uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's going to be a pretty much... Uh, look, don't quote me on it. But as far as I'm aware, it's going to be pretty much everything DC-related will be on there. Um, but... As we discussed, not necessarily available in Australia yet. Yeah. So the talk is that the that it's going to go live and it's going to go live to the States, US and Canada, as everything does. The Americas. The Americas and whatnot. Um, and the hope is that over time, with success, they will branch out. So it'll be a lot like, um, unfortunately, say Netflix for us. Yeah. Where, you know, they obviously had it in the States way before we got it. And we eventually ended up getting it, which was great, but it just took a little bit of time before it got here. I have a feeling this was also the same kind of deal when Marvel Unlimited came out. Yeah. We had to wait a little while before it got here. Yeah. and look, Same with even Comixology. Yeah. And normally we do, and that's fine. You know, it is what it is. I mean, it's only 2018, for fuck's sake. Like, I can't... <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Like, why, why would a digital resource be worldwide? Yeah. Information transfers, you know, in thousands of a second or whatever, but no. We still can't reach Australia, apparently. It's ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, so look, it is what it is. Uh, there are ways that you can get around that, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to pay? What would you pay for this? I'd pay 15 bucks a month. 15? Yeah. That's like, that's it? Well, look, I, I think that's, you know, I, like, I, I can't imagine paying more when I can already get, you know, Netflix, yeah. Stan, God, Spotify, premium, Apple Music, like all, it all, adds all up. of these other things for, for less than $15. Well, month, yeah. You know look, what I mean? Well, so, let's, let's think of like the gen, a general streaming amount. So yeah. you've got Netflix. Yeah. You've got Stan. Yeah. You've got Hulu if you're in the States. Yeah. Uh, Apple Music. Yeah. Spotify. Um, at Disney when it comes out. Like imagine all these oh. things and, and how, how much the, the monthly streaming bill is going to climb. But for this, I would pay it. Uh, like I genuinely think for the for the new content for the for the fact that you have access to comics, a hundred percent. I'd I'd pay extra money to get it. Uh, but hey, they don't want to give it to me. That's fine. What am I going to do? These creatures were here before us, and if we're not careful, they're going to be here after. Welcome. To Jurassic World. So this week we went back to the cinemas for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the sequel to 2015's Jurassic World, and uh, I guess the extension of the uh, Jurassic Park saga, uh, which has been going on since, what, 1993, something yeah, like that? Yeah, the Jurassic Universe. The Jurassic Universe. The Jurassic Cinematic Universe. Yeah, the JCU. The JCU. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a funnier joke for us where we live because that's also a university. So uh, it is what it is. It's a worldwide university. Oh, is it really? Yep. Oh, well, there you go. It's not a plug for them. Yeah, no, not at all. Unpaid ad- advertisement. Uh, we're not here to talk about James Cook University. We're about. We're here to talk about something much dumber. Yeah, much dumber. Uh, not a precursor for how we feel about the film, I'm sure. But hey, uh, why don't you give us a synopsis? Set four years after the Jurassic World... Our Jurassic World theme park fiasco, Owen and Claire must return to Isla Nublar to... Re- I butchered that, didn't yeah. I? How is, how is that said? Uh, Isla Nublar. Isla Nublar to rescue the remaining dinosaurs from an extinction-level threat in the form of a not-so-dormant volcano dinosaur-themed chaos ensures. Doesn't it? Uh, so starring Chris Pratt as Owen Grady, Bryce Dallas Howard as Claire Deering, Rafe Spall as Eli Mills, Justice Smith as Franklin, Danielle Pineda as Zia with James Cromwell, Toby Jones, B.D. Wong and Jeff Goldblum. Sort of. Sort of. But we'll get to that at some point. Directed by J.A. Bayona with a runtime of 128 minutes. Uh, how is this thing doing critically, man? 
Well, this one is actually a little bit of a mixed bag and it's not really that surprising. So IMDb give this a 6.6 .6 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes has it as 50% rotten, mm. which is interesting. One of the first Rotten movies we've actually had in a while since we've reviewed a DC movie. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess like, so. That's well, the only yeah. way to kind of put that. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, and the audience score is 63%. Metacritic give it 51 and Cinema Score give it an A-. minus. Right, so a little bit uh, uh, down the middle. Yeah. Pretty much. Now, what's not down the middle is the numbers that this thing is pulling. Um, had an opening weekend of $148 million. Uh, it currently has a domestic total of around $181 million, a foreign total of $567 million already for a worldwide total of $776 million on an estimated $170 million budget. Like... How now? How? How? <laughs> this movie does not deserve those numbers. Uh, it this is, is like Fast and the Furious, man. This is this is Fast and the Furious 8, but it's like Jurassic Park 5. Like yeah. They've gotten that bad already. Um, but I will tell you this. Um, out of that $567 million foreign, uh, $111, $111 <laughs> came, out, <laughs> came out of my, my pocket, basically. After my trip, it cost me forty dollars to go to the cinemas today. Did it really? Isn't that insane? Wow! I uh, forty dollars that I wish I could have spent somewhere <laughs> else. So um, yeah, it cost me twelve dollars. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh lucky you! I didn't have any sweet Cinebuzz rewards or free tickets for this one, unfortunately. So I'm um, lucky. But one hundred and eleven million dollars out of China. So this has wow. yeah, it's crazy. So this has opened internationally. So it's yeah. done. It's it's everywhere, pretty much uh, everywhere it's going to be. So. I don't know, man. It's going to hit a billion, no doubt. Uh, I don't think it's going to do initial oh. Jurassic World numbers because I think once people see it, like it'll die off pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. This doesn't really have the, the going back factor no. to it. Like, no. You watch it and you'll be like, cool. Okay. That was a movie. All right, look. We're, so we've, we've kind of given it away already. Yes. Uh, but let's get into a little bit of a non-spoiler discussion. Uh, you know, we'll keep it brief. Um, just overall sort of like thoughts and just, you know, effectively whether <laughs> whether it's worth people's precious time and hard-earned money. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, look, I'm going to answer that question straight off the bat. Okay. This movie is not worth going to the cinemas for right. at all, in my opinion. Yeah. This is just a cash grab, man. Yeah. The, the story is loose at best. Um, it has more plot holes than you find in... In any movie, yeah. like this is honestly, there's just things that happen for the for the sake of a single scene. They don't mean anything. Um, there are entire like what should be massive plot points that happen that are just basically never discussed again. Oh, just, oh my god! When we get into spoilers, <laughs> yeah, uh, like there's there's something that changes the game. Yeah, like literally changes the game. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's just like. Yeah, that's a thing that happened yeah. that we'll you, never talk about again. How do you like those bad boys? <laughs> yeah. Um, look, this movie is just like, you can't even go in there and say it was like just a comic, like, sorry, a um, like a, a popcorn movie. Yeah. It was just like dead set trash. And like, I feel like Chris Pratt's didn't even want to do this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it sort of, it felt like that at times, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the, the cheap trick of getting Jeff Goldblum in this movie was... Well, you might be heading a bit, you know, into spoilery territory. Okay. So, okay. yeah, keep it, keep it light. Uh, but yeah, look, essentially the story in this movie is really non-existent. It's predictable all the way through. Right. Um, the fact that there's literally no challenges, there's basically no villain... Uh, well, there is, but like, do you care? Exactly. You know? That's what I mean. Like the villain is like, he's just like a douche. Well, here's what I would say about the villain, right? So the villain is is Eli Mills, who is like the, uh, oh, it doesn't even matter who he is. It genuinely doesn't matter who he is. Uh, but it's just like generic dude. Yeah. But effectively, so, you know, he, like if you make Claire from Jurassic World a villain, it's exactly the same thing. A hundred percent. Genetically engineering a dinosaur for entertainment and profit. Yeah. And they, they even say that in this and, movie. And he references it. You know, you're, you're no better than me. You yeah. did this. and But he's exactly right. A hundred percent. He is exactly right. It might be the most kind of like, you know, self-realizing bit of dialogue in the movie that, you know, Claire effectively did exactly the same thing. 
I I honestly thought that was like the cleverest part of this movie. Yeah. Because I thought it was just them doing a bit of tongue in cheek. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but the whole thing, like, it's you know, it's 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 predicated on us kind of like caring about these characters and caring about these dinosaurs that continuously kill people god damn it like at what point do we not just go you know what like let's just let's just let him go yeah like remember that time when we tried to do a theme park and like pterodactyls were just indiscriminately killing people remember that they're jerks man <laughs> like, but no <laughs> let's let's protect them you know what I mean? At some point, you kind of have to go, uh, you know what? Look, I think we're done here. Yeah, I I 100% agree. So I um I can sum this up, my thoughts in the name that instantly came to me once this was done. I said to myself, I literally said to myself, as soon as this movie was done, I'm like, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, more like Spurassic World Fallen Stinkdom, am I right? And I was talking to myself. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> and you high-fived yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fully did the over-the-top high-five. Uh, but realistically, like, it just, man, nothing. There, There is genuinely nothing. There are more characters in this that don't matter than any other movie I've seen in quite some time. Yeah. Like, you've basically got um, the the two little offsiders, so the younger offsiders, like Franklin oh, Zia and, and Zia, Franklin. Yeah. who um, realistically don't matter at all. Oh, they could be deleted from this movie and it wouldn't change it. 100%. At all. Um, and then you've got James Cromwell, um, who is effectively... A character called uh, Benjamin Lockwood, who I'm assuming is created especially for this, because I don't remember him ever being mentioned in any of the others. So I don't know if that's okay. true. I I thought that was just me because I'm like I've never seen this guy before. No, you've I, I don't think you've ever seen him, and I don't think he's ever really been mentioned. But effectively, he is the 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 partner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of the original guy from the first one that created the the whole Jurassic yeah, Park he just, experience. He just rolls in. I'm like, you're nobody. Yeah, like th- this never happened. Yeah. You guys are just making this up right now. Like this this is a mess. Like someone let me know if I'm wrong, but I feel like this was just a massive massive plot hole here. Look, there's every chance that it could have just been like a um like a throwaway line in you know one of the the f- like in the first movie, especially I suppose. So it could have been a fallen line where where what was the what was the original guy's name Hammond, the old dude. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders. (laughs) Where uh, Colonel Sanders is basically, you know, he might have had a throwaway line where, oh, me and my partner, you know, we had this dream or whatever, and you know, blah blah. Maybe. Maybe it happened. I don't know, but um, to me, it didn't. I don't remember that at all. Um, And it just at some point you've got to go, hey, like just stop. All you're doing is genetically engineering different dinosaurs every time. Yeah. And you're having this one dinosaur that's like the bad one and then you have to stop it and then, you know, the movie's over and whatnot. Well, I'm going to tell you, like, what I loved about the original Jurassic Park, like the very original, and it kind of like, it redefined cinema. It made like everything that you love about movies great again. You know, there was was scares, there was fun, there was adventure. It changed the way movies were kind of made after that. Jurassic World kind of like rekindled that love of movies again for me, where it's like, damn, man, this is what I loved so much about Jurassic Park. Jurassic World delivered on like everything that like was cool about that. Yeah. This movie was dog shit. Yeah. This was Jurassic World rehashed with maybe two writers to it. Yeah. Well, look, here's the thing. Um, there was two writers and they was fucked it? it. Yeah. Well, there you go. Like, it, it shows, like, this was like, this felt so half assed that. Oh, you can't blame the number of writers. You can you can write a brilliant screenplay as an individual. Oh, uh, yeah, of course you could. But it's it took two guys to fuck this. Yeah. To, like, fuck it as royal as they did. Because I, I will tell you this I wasn't the biggest fan of Jurassic World when I first saw it, right? But I went back and I, I rewatched it this week especially for this because I knew we were going to do this and I couldn't really remember it. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'll check it out. I might have been a bit harsh on it or whatever. And I checked it out and I actually didn't mind it. Like, it, it was good. Like, it was a good ride. Like, it's it was, good you fun. Know, yeah, fun adventure, you know, some genuine kind of like, ooh, what's happening? You know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, you know, we got to this and I kind of had high hopes in the sense of I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know, maybe it's going to be not as bad as I think it's going to be. Uh, but no, it is exactly as bad as you think it would be. There is literally an entire scene in this movie that was ruined by the trailer, the first trailer that came out. hundred percent. The entire thing from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, basically, the whole end of this movie, um, you know, you may have 
practically effectively seen if you've seen the trailers. So if you haven't seen this movie, don't watch the trailers. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like it, it's definitely a movie trope at the moment where these trailers are just revealing a little bit too much. Like way too much, man. Way too much. Uh, let's get into uh, spoilers. Okay. So uh, if you haven't seen the movie, it is not a recommendation from us uh, at all. Oh, it's shit all the way. Uh, I would go and, uh, hey, pirate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? If if you got like some free movie points or you got a free ticket, this is maybe see it that way. Yeah, maybe. Look, I'll give it this. The the first act, so the whole going to the island and getting off the island and the, the erupting of the volcano, I was in. Oh. I, I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. Like, there's some shit that does not make any sense and is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? You've nailed it right on the head. The first act was good. The second act was nothing. It was just straight out the Terrible. most boring cinema that yep. you'll ever see. Yep. And then the last little bit of the third act was like, okay, it's not bad, but it's well, still not great. Uh, we'll get to that. So let's get into some spoilers now. Um, oh, God. Where, where do we even start? Yeah. Um, uh. You know where I want to start? Okay, where? I want to start uh, from the end. Okay, so you want to go, we'll work backwards. I, I want to go right to the end. You want to know why? Because that'll probably make more sense than what this movie did. Yeah. So uh, my note um, for for the ending of this movie was literally, oh my fucking God, that ending was some of the worst shit I've ever seen. I want to kill myself. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you uh, please elaborate on that a <laughs> little bit? Can I elaborate on it? Well, this whole thing is, is again, it's it's basically like, you know, we understand how bad these dinosaurs are, right? Yeah. So we've got a character in in um, Claire who at the very start of this movie was like, you know, she was the biggest proponent for dinosaurs. She's like, we've got to save them all. You know, I know she never said it, but like, I know they've tried to kill people all the time, but we've got to save these it's ones. It's kind right? of what they're made to do. Yeah, It's right. like, just fucking hunt. Yeah. So then we get to the end of the movie, right? And basically her decision hinges on, do I let these dinosaurs out into the world and let them kill people effectively? Or... Do I let them die in captivity in these horrible cages? <laughs> Which, if I had have just done the right thing in the first place, because eventually she she decides to let them die, right? Yes. She's like, I'm going to let them get gassed in this cage. And it's kind of like, well, really? Like, like if you could have just left them on the island. Yeah, they... If you saw that island from the top, there was a whole half of that island that didn't get burnt. Correct. <laughs> so they might have had a better chance of living if you had to just left them alone. But then you get to this point where she's like, uh, uh, I don't know, is I, do I kill humans or do I kill dinosaurs? Do I kill like potentially hundreds of humans yeah. or do I kill these 12, yeah. 12 dinosaurs? No, it might have been 11. There was 11. 11 different species that they kept, but it's it's kind of like, what a ridiculous choice. Oh, 100%. So you've now put her in a position as a character. You've put this character in a position where her choice, and she's thinking about this, she's genuinely thinking about whether she should do the one of these two things, is to let them out to kill humans or to kill them all in a cage when she could have just let them die by natural causes or whatever. Then she decides not to do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty brave. Right, uh, like I genuinely thought she was gonna let him go, and I was gonna go. Well, that's fucking dumb, because you know what a fucking why would you do yeah, that? What a ridiculous decision. And then the kid hits the button, and like the kid is like, "Oh my god, it's some of the like the most horrible shit I've ever heard in my life." It's like I had to. Now they're alive, like just me. like me. Because one thing we haven't spoken about is that this kid is a fucking clone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's completely brushed over like instantly 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 so, like why even include this in the movie you know what i think it is i, I, I feel know. like it's this like a hangover effect from the original concepts that they had when they were going to reboot jurassic world so what happened was they were going to have these like human dinosaur hybrids yep so, you know, they obviously had the technology to clone dinosaurs. They found the technology to clone humans. Hey, you know what we'll do? Dino humans. Yeah. Humosaurs. Humosaurs. So I think it's like a hangover effect from that like storyline that these two writers got together, probably high or drunk or probably both. Well, well Colin Trevorrow wrote the original Jurassic World. 
So, like, it's not like the guy can't do something yeah, that's, right. like, good and fun and he's done some other things before. I wonder how much, like, studio interference came into this. Well, I don't know, because he was also the guy who was kicked off The Last Jedi. Was he really? Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Maybe he's, like... Yeah, maybe he's, he's just he's, shit. He's high. He's high, man. <laughs> he's high and drunk at the same time. But... But the whole thing with letting them out into the world, right, fine. Like, whatever. It's the dumbest decision, but okay, right? But this kid, right, and everyone's just like, oh, okay, cool. I guess that's a thing now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, you've got a clone kid who has just let 11 species of dinosaur out into the world and you're all just, you just walk out and go to your car. Yeah. You know and what I mean? Just, and like, you effectively kidnap this child. Yeah, and we never talk about any of this yeah. again. It's weird. And anyway, I had, like, that, that was, like, honestly, I was already gone. <laughs> like, oh, I was already yeah. done with this movie well and truly by this point. But it, it just got to that and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I opened my phone and typed that note yeah. in the cinema. Well, you know where I did it was when um, the hunter guy, yeah, yeah, played by Ted Levine, yep. went into the cage. Yes. And I was like, I'm done. I'm like, I was, I was already done, but this, I'm double done. Like, come on. I, okay, look. Here, <laughs> this, is basically, this is basically stupidity for the sake of... of uh, like driving the plot. A hundred percent. Right. So effectively you've got this guy who has just led this assault on this, you know, this Island and has managed to capture like 11 (laughs) species of dinosaurs. And he tricked Claire and he tricked Owen and he, you know, did everything that he needed to do. He played the game. So he's probably pretty smart. You would assume, right. Got some wits about him. And here is this highly dangerous, highly vicious, ferocious dinosaur. And he's like, you know what? I want that tooth. Yeah. He's like he was he was just rocket raccooning out and he's like I want that tooth. 100%. I need that tooth. And he's like, you know, they're like just dumb. They had to get the dinosaur out of captivity somehow. And that's how they did it. And that's it. how they did it and it was just stupid. How did you feel about the dinosaur like smirking and looking at the camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like <laughs> I felt like Ashton Kutcher was going to like bust into my cinema yeah. and go Cade, you've just been punked. Yeah. Because I was like, that is the stupidest, stupidest thing I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> oh, honestly. I like, even now, I'm just thinking of that scene. And he's like, it's I'm surprised cringeworthy. he didn't wink. It's cringeworthy. Yeah. Like, that yeah, would have so just topped it off. Like, wink. Yeah. You know, just kind of like, just do the old finger guns towards, <laughs> the, towards the camera. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I I mean, like, this is kind of what I'm getting at. And realistically, when you look at the, when you look at the plot, what you have is exactly the same thing happening over again. I spoke about a little bit in in the non-spoiler section, but effectively all you've got is somebody wanting, the, the, the only difference between Mills and Claire is that she was doing it for, for entertainment. Yes. Right. And he was doing it to to weaponize it effectively. Effectively. Right. So yes, it's it's probably worse, but the two things are just as fucking oh, bad as each other. Hand in hand, mate. So I don't know, man. How many times can we keep going back to this same well though? Well, like, this is it, Troy. Like I a hundred percent do not want another Jurassic World movie. Well because you're gonna get one, I, mate. I, I know. Looking at these numbers, it's like inevitable. It's going to happen. And like don't act like these dinosaurs would not be immediately terminated. Yeah. Like straight away. Yeah, well, effectively. And look, I, I get the whole point of, you know, like we need to love animals and all that sort of stuff and that's great. Like, and, and, and that is completely understandable, right? But you have already fucked with everything. everything. Nature. You, you've, you've basically fucked with nature and the natural way of life already, right? They're genetically modified animals. And, you know, you kind of like at some point from back in the Jurassic Park days, they have been killing people nonstop and no one has been able to contain them. Right. So so at some point you just, you you know, you count your losses and you go, you know what? Fool me four times. Yeah. I'm done now. You know what I mean? And then you just unfortunately let them burn. Well, I feel like that was like Jeff Globlum's role in this movie. He's kind of oh. like, stop being dickheads. Yeah, but let them die. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was like I completely see why Jeff Goldblum was in the marketing. Right? Yeah, 
for for the sense of you know like it's Jeff Goldblum and people oh, why like, wouldn't oh, you have yeah. it he's, he's, he's hot Malcolm's right now back and you know all that sort of stuff and it's like oh throw back to the first movie and you know all that sort of shit but it's kind of like you know also fuck you for doing that because yeah, 100% like, it's you, like you don't need that you bitches he had maybe a minute screen time tops and you know what you saw 90% of that in the trailers yeah he was basically he was more useless in this than he was in Independence Day Resurgence Ooh. and he was pretty useless in that he too he was very useless so I don't know, maybe that's Jeff Goldblum's thing. Oh, he did drive a bus in that. Was that him? Was he driving that bus? Or was that his dad? I think that was his dad. Yeah, his dad was driving the bus. Anyway, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that shit movie yet. We're already talking about this shit movie. Um, Overall, what did you think of the the Indoraptor, though? I didn't care for it. Like, yeah. it didn't feel like anything new. It just didn't have a good enough character arc. You know? Yeah, you <laughs> know, like, it just was very one-dimensional. Like, all he wanted to do was, like smirk at people he felt very creepy yeah uh, like uh, honestly this thing it, it 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 was a plot point yeah um it you knew it's like it 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 had a time frame on it like you knew it it was going to die yeah it had to die yeah it um oh you already knew blue was going to be the one that killed this dinosaur 100 percent. and like, it's like this dinosaur is based off blue but it's going to be beaten by blue yeah it's been designed to be better in every Every possible way. Yeah. But Blue's the good guy. But Blue's a good guy. Yep. You know what? This feels oddly familiar to Jurassic World. What? Where <laughs> the Indominus Rex was based off T-Rex. And, and the T-Rex. And the T-Rex beat it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is just this is just shit. Yeah. It's just no good. It's, it's boring. It's repetitive. It's predictable. I don't know what else you can really say about this movie, man. Like, well... It has has I've still got a couple of things. I'm not done here. Oh yeah, let's let's tear this <laughs> let's tear this bad boy open. I'm not done by a long shot. So, uh, hey, world shit a CGI goat. <laughs> Did you even see it? Uh, the so, one that was in the cage. Yeah, it was when they were yeah. trying. <laughs> yeah, it's like when they were trying to get the T Rex out of its cage. Um, hey, yeah, that was terrible. Uh, world shit a CGI lion. I didn't mind that. Seriously? Yeah. Come on, that was so shit. No, no, I thought it was good. I liked it. It was kind of like, I thought that was fun. And that's what I want from Jurassic Park movies is like fun like that. It's like, you know, two kind of kings of the jungle. One's a fucking much bigger king, mate. Do you think a lion is really going to stand there and go, you know what? I'm going to outroar you. Well, he did. Yeah, that was a big roar, but I got uh, an uh, equally my, as big roar, even though it's I a roar like off. a 20th of your size. Hey, man, it's not about the size. It's how you use it. And I felt like that roar was powerful. Right. You know what? He wasn't just roaring for him. He was roaring for every other line in the in the pride. Yeah, well, that's true. Okay, so, that's you fair. know, there's 20 roars behind that single roar. Uh, yeah, okay. How do you feel about that? That's, you know, you've proven me wrong. Yeah, there you what, go, what mate. What can I say? Uh, world shit is kid. <laughs> oh. oh, man. And so, you know what? Like, so this kid, uh, this kid's name is Maisie, and uh, she was the... the, the granddaughter of uh, Lockwood but then turned out to just be a clone of his daughter yeah and again we've spoken about it but just completely brushed over just never referencing the fact that we've cloned a perfectly fucking normal human nah nah Uh, that doesn't even matter we're just gonna completely leave that what do you think of her reaction to her finding out she was a clone where she just seemed like okay now sweetie we need you to act really shocked for two seconds well here's how I think her her whole kind of script went it's like, um, you know, Maisie enters from left, screams. Oh, Maisie runs, screams. screams. <laughs> you know, like shit happens. She gets a good distance away from the dinosaur, screams. screams. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maisie hides in bed. Doesn't scream. <laughs> doesn't scream. But like the like of all the places you could hide, you're gonna hide in your bed. Yeah. And also some of the worst trying to shut the elevator mm. shutter acting I've ever seen in my life. I, so look, bad. I'm not a child actor. I don't know how hard it is. <laughs> it could be like, very to, difficult to pretend to, you know, to kind of close an elevator shutter. Yeah, but you know, could she, be pretty tricky. She got there in the end, I guess. Oh, look, um, I liked. There was look. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. It felt like there was a couple of throwbacks to the original movie. All right, let's let's be nice to it for a bit. Let's talk okay. about some of the stuff we liked. Um, I liked how <laughs> fuck Detroit. This is gonna be too difficult. I really liked how they grabbed a really noisy truck truck on the island. Yep. And somehow got it up to a hundred kilometers an hour, which was a sixty miles per hour on the on the uh, speedo there. Yep. 
in about 20 meters. Yep. So this is the world's fastest truck. It's Fast and Furious truck. Yeah, Fast and Furious truck. It's Dom's truck. Yes. <laughs> Had a lot of family yeah, in that, in that truck. Um, and was able to jump into the boat without anyone noticing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like no one heard this like eight ton truck. People were there. Yeah. People legitimately would have seen that happen. And they're just like, oh, that's just Steve. He's always late. Yeah. He's on island time, this oh. guy. <laughs> Can yeah. you believe that guy? Oh, Steve, come on. And like no one recognizing them in the truck? Yeah. It's like, come on, man. These guys were like headliners to come to this island. The whole point was to like effectively get rid of them. Yes. And then there they are. And it's like, how do you not see them? They just jumped a fucking truck into the back of a boat. And I don't know about you, Troy, but I feel like there would have been 100, maybe 200 people on that island. Uh, there was a few. I don't know how many like I saw. way it. more than I initially thought. Yeah, I was like, damn, okay, they've got this place on lockdown. Yeah. I don't know how many I saw on the boat, maybe 10. <laughs> <laughs> Security was very lax. Oh, they're all... um. They're all at chow. They're all eating. It yeah, was dinner fair. time. It was dinner time. Uh, you know, you don't want to, don't piss off the cook. You know what I mean? Ah, that's yeah, fair. You, you got to be in the dining room on time. Um, but yeah, like, I didn't mind. Yeah, because I forgot for a sec that we're talking about stuff that we liked. So <laughs> I didn't like, like I said. But do it in a fun way. All right, yeah, right. Where it's like things that you don't like. Wink. But like, as we were discussing it, at, you know, earlier on, like the the island scene was actually pretty good. You know what I mean? Like the effects, like the the effects of the the actual volcano erupting it looked amazing. Like looked great. Oh, how the how the mountain was kind of just splitting down the sides. I was like, wow, yeah, like, that's cool. Like it's it's almost like they they kind of like yeah, let's let's start this movie like full of like full <laughs> of know, hope. promise and hope, <laughs> and then you know just as the audience slowly dies inside, we too as filmmakers will die inside along with them. Yeah, and that's kind of the 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 trip that they went on. They went on the same trip that we did as they were making the movie. But um, I didn't mind a lot of that. I thought it was cool. Yes, it was ridiculous that, you know, Owen could outrun uh, like volcanic ash and some dinosaurs apparently too. And, yep. Um, basically all they had to do is turn left rather than right and they would have been on the other side of the island which Correct. didn't get attacked. Well, you know what? We only saw like a fraction of the dinosaurs. That's true. So there's, it's highly likely that there's still dinosaurs on that island. 100%. And also, like, pterodactyls, right? They can fly. They can fly, <laughs> man. <laughs> so you don't actually have to catch them because, they like, they didn't. Nope. But they still ended up, like, in America. Oh. You Hang know on. why? Troy. Because catch- pterodactyls can fly, Cade. Yeah, of course they can. <laughs> now, this is one thing that's always bothered me about Jurassic Park movies. How close is this island to America? I don't know. Because they flew in a very rickety little plane, what seemed to be like a few hours to get to this island. Oh, they did. Like, that thing surely couldn't travel that far. Think of that. Surely not. Like, that's not enough. Like, you don't have a big enough fuel tank. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And I was like, it's just off the coast. It has to be. It's basically one of the Hawaiian islands. Surely. It it 100% has to be. How do they get all these dinosaurs onto that little boat and then get through customs, like international waters. Oh, man, look, look, billions of dollars will do that. Well, right? no, I'm sure there's a way. No, it's not billions of dollars because the bad guy... Oh, he Mills, didn't actually know. He didn't know. Oh, Lockwood didn't know. Yeah, you're right. So, A, where was this funding coming from? Exactly. And you can assume that Mills being like the right-hand man of Lockwood was just using his funds to make it happen. He was obviously kind of in control of his whole thing. He basically said, I'm this kid's guardian now that he's dead. Yes. So you can assume then that he would have access to pretty much everything. My question then would be, if you already have access to it and you kill him, why are you trying to sell dinosaurs? Yeah. Like, you've basically made $200 million when I'm sure you have access to billions of it. Yes. I, I didn't understand it. It felt like they were, like, dealing in pennies. But compared to, like, what, what that guy would have already been worth. Exactly. And, it, like, that's what I thought this movie is, like, its driving force was, like, this guy is, like, risking everything for, for nothing. Yeah. It's like, cool, I just made $20 million on this dinosaur. It's like, how much is that park worth? Yeah. Twenty million dollars is nothing. 
right? In comparison to, to you know, anyway. At the start of the movie, we hear that the the company had to pay out $800 million in damages. Yeah. That would be nothing to this company. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he's celebrating that he's made $200 million. Yeah, roughly. Like, uh, he, he risked everything for $200 million. Yeah, when you would dead set assume that he has access to that money now. Oh, man. Right? Like... It doesn't seem like there was anyone else. Like, yes, it would probably go to the kid, but as the benefactor, he would have, like... Access to it. If he's her guardian, he would have access slash control over it until she is of age, right? So, uh, anyway, it is what it is. I I didn't mind the very first scene as well when they're actually trying to get the uh, the bone from the Indominus Rex. Yes, very good. Um, Pretty good. Like, totally. It's like, I, I don't know how stupid you have to be to kind of go, oh, anything that's in here is dead by now. It's Have a, you looked? It's four years. Yeah. Like you fly in there and you see fucking dinosaurs still. <laughs> <laughs> they literally had news footage of brontosauruses yes. or bronchos or whatever, or brachiosauruses. I don't know what they're called. Dicknecks. Dicknecks. <laughs> About long dickneck dinosaurs just rolling through the jungle. Nothing makes sense in this movie, Troy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but you're going to go in the water with a megalodon or whatever they're freaking called. And you're going to go, oh, no, it's cool. It's got to be dead, yeah. right? No. Nah. Right? You dumb. So dumb. You dumb. Okay. I want to talk about BD Wong, Troy. BD Wong. I think we've we've talked about like... Big Dick Wong. <laughs> Big Dick Wong. I want to talk about like... Th- we've already spoken about how bad the movie is. Yeah. I want to talk about how good the movie could have been. Okay. So do you have any ideas how you might want to make this movie a little bit better? Because like, just in our discussions... I realize everything that we've hated, the things that we've liked, yep. and where this movie may have transitioned. Right. Uh, look, I, I would just, the only thing I would say is just be better at writing movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's really good. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, or just hire better writers. Or just like have people to, to oversee the scripts and have a look at it and go, you know what? That sounds pretty shit. We're not going to do that. Let's have some rewrites. Yeah. Yeah. That's where studio interference should come in. A hundred percent. Right. That's when studio interference goes right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, what are your plans? I'm interested to hear. Okay. So I, I like the idea that they want to kind of weaponize the, the creatures. Yep. But we didn't get like any footage of anything like that happening. It would have been great to see like maybe we're, we're at a world, we're at war somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, BD Wong is actually engineering smaller dinosaurs to send into battle right not these like gigantic monsters and they're like having trials of like okay this dinosaur is not working that dinosaur is not working you know a little bit of trial and error yeah and then we find owen who like catches wind of this and then he has to go and try to stop them well see what you're saying it could effectively be the the sequel to this. I reckon it might be. Like Jurassic World War 3. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's going to be it. <laughs> that's definitely going to be it. Jurassic you know it World War 3. You've got to call it 3 because yeah. it's also Jurassic World 3. Eh? That's what it's going to be, Troy. <laughs> because there was too much talk about like weaponizing yeah. all these dinosaurs. Like, this one is a walking tank. Yeah, but just remember that there was also talk about a cloned human. Yeah. That never, <laughs> never went anywhere. Do you think they're ever going to do anything with that? What can they do? It's like, no one cares about cloned humans uh, in Dinosaur World. I don't know, man. Like, unless the... the hey, uh, here's my biggest thing. Like, I don't care. Like, yep. I no longer care about the adventures of Claire and Owen. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. Like, why would I? Like, they did nothing in that movie. It was stupid. So why would I, like, you know, care about what happens to them next? Do you know what I mean? I so, get you. Yeah, I don't know. And I mean, uh, just, you know, about as much chemistry as fucking I had in school and I never took chemistry. Damn, you know what I mean? That's no chemistry. Yeah, that's no chemistry. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, so look, are we are we done here? Are we are we finished? Are you done with Jurassic World? I Oh, look, man. As a franchise, as a whole? 100%. Like, I was never really on board initially, but, you know, I kind of came around a little bit. But now that this has kind of happened and it just basically shat on me, big dinosaur shit. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm out. This is 100% shit. Uh, I have... No recommendation for this movie whatsoever. If I could put this on a, a rating scale of like 
zero to five. This is half. Half star. Half star. Damn. I'd be pr- probably close to the same. Like, this is honestly one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. Yeah, which is a shame. Like, it, it could have or should have had a lot of potential, but, like, effectively, it's just, it's a cash cow, isn't it? Oh, 100%. And I'm fucking, I'm going to be, I've, they need to pick up their game for, like, genuine fans of the Jurassic Park series, like me. Yeah. For me to want to even go and see the next one in a cinema. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just waiting for Netflix, man. Yeah, look, for sure. And look, we've spoken about this before, but it's kind of like, you know, I understand that there there is like just big, dumb popcorn action, right? But you can only make it so dumb, right? The action has to be outstanding <laughs> if you're going to like have no story whatsoever. Definitely. And unfortunately, this just didn't have enough action that was like worthwhile and the story was shit. It wasn't there. Yeah. And that's going to do it for another episode. Stay tuned for next week's show where we wrap up season two of Luke Cage. Yes. Have you started watching yet? No, I haven't. So I have a very big week ahead of me. <laughs> you I've, do. Um, I've tried to clear my schedule as much as I can because um, I heard that this one isn't going to be super fantastic. So I kind of just want to I want to binge it. Oh, I don't want to say too much. Okay. Uh, in so far as how I feel. I have seen the whole thing now, obviously. Um, but yeah, uh, look, I mean, uh, see how you go. Bushmaster or Bush Apprentice? Uh, Bushmaster. Ooh. Yeah. Tantalizing. Tantalizing indeed. Um, so yeah, look, that's it. I mean, we're done. We took a big giant shit on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Oh. Like it t- tried to take a big giant shit on us. Uh, but oh, I don't, know. I don't know how I'm ever going to bounce back from that movie. Yeah. Well, it's all, you know, it's almost like we try to be super positive we try man. as much as we can and you know like sometimes it just doesn't work man sometimes you just get some shit you know and- what? we're gonna get like some pretty mixed responses from this episode but just know we did try our best we tried to go in there and like that as much as we can well you love the first movie i love the first one man you know what i mean like and i'm not talking about jurassic park i'm talking yeah. about jurassic world you know what can you do what can you what do what can man? you do uh what you can do as you find can follow us, us on, on social media. Oh, I tried to take your limelight yeah, there. Where I can do. they find us on social media? Try. Uh, we have Facebook. That's Comic Confidential. We also have the Facebook listener community. That is Comic Confidential listener community. You can just jump on there and check that out. We also have an Instagram and Twitter. That's at Comic Con Pod. Uh, we have a pretty fantastic website. That we do, and that's ComicConPod.com. Past episodes, future episodes, and everything in between. Also this week, we featured on a, a little show called The Countdown. Yeah, well, it was last week, technically. You technically. know, by the time this comes oh, out. I, I you know, guess yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. these... We're in the future. I'm, I'm wrecking the illusion of podcasting <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> it's not live, Kate. It's not live. Damn. Um, yeah, but we were, we were on The Countdown. Which was a lot of fun with... Uh, Wayne and Paul. Yeah, indeed. So if you haven't checked that out, uh, please do go and check it out and let us know uh, what you think. Let us know who won. It was a top 10 list versus top 10 list, the countdown versus Comic Confidential. Uh, we won't talk about any sort of poll results or anything like that any because you know, I don't think they exist. Mate, the only polls that they want to talk about is the Fast and the Furious, you know, racing up the poll, but whatever. Right. Yeah, nice. I spoiled that. Yeah, that, no so good. good. No good. Uh, I would have said something along the lines of the only polls they want to talk about are their own. Yeah, I don't want to be rude, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a rude boy. Uh, but don't forget, on the website as well, you can find the countdown. They are on there. They uh, All their episodes, or a lot of their episodes. Yes, I don't know how many very episodes Very fantastic are show. Uh, great show. Check that out. Um, as is Potterheads with Amy and Kirsten, and as is So Here's the Idea with Shad, all part of the CC Radio Network, all on the website we also have a patreon that's patreon.com forward slash comic con pod where you can get stuff you can get episodes for one dollar a month yeah bonus episodes bonus episode not this one you get this free this is a free episode this is your freebie yeah yeah if you want the good shit you've got to look behind the curtain <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is the crap that we churn out for free uh no but yeah for uh, as little as a dollar a month you will get a weekly bonus episode um and other tiers get other stuff as well and it's all pretty cool um but that's it pretty much let's wrap this bad boy up let's wrap it up uh thanks for listening as always i'm troy i'm Cade, and this has been comic confidential a pop culture podcast oh cheers peace <laughs> 
Well, it is, isn't it? You know, it's a piece, piece of shit of fucking that movie. Oh. I'm I, angry. I, I, I'm <laughs> angry. <laughs> I expect I expect better of Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. So do I. I love Bryce Dallas Howard, by the way. We didn't really get a chance to talk about her. Yeah. Or Chris Pratt, to be honest. Or like, Chris we didn't Pratt. really talk about any of them because none of them mattered. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I like them both. Yeah, they're good. But they, uh, they're, they're very pretty. They're, they're limited. They're both very pretty. How awkward was that scene where they're in the bar and um, Dice Dallas How- Dallas Howard's character was like, ha, 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 cackling. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I like you anymore. <laughs> But then it's kind of like, uh, uh, no, I broke up with you or I left you. And he's like, no, you left me or like I left you or whatever. Yeah. And I think Chris Pratt was right. He was right. <laughs> because she's basically saying, hey, if you want to go live in your goddamn caravan, you go do it. And he's like, all right. All right see ya. See ya. <laughs> so technically it's him. If you love this podcast, then head over to ComicConPod.com to check out the other incredible shows on our network. Whether you love comedy, pop culture, or movie and TV reviews, CC Radio has got you covered. 